So a while back I did a video on XRANDA where I was setting up virtual monitors. I'll put that video up in the corner. But today we're going to be doing something a bit more down to earth with it and setting up dual monitor support as well as correcting for overscan. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because I'm trying to hit 100 subs by the end of the year, but I would absolutely love it if I could do it by the end of November. So any help would be really appreciated. So now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So like last time, if you're using a system with Wayland, you're not going to be able to do this. There's probably some Wayland equivalent tool, but most desktop environments and most window managers use um, Xorg or whatever. Yeah, Xorg, I'm pretty sure it is. So bring my terminal up. So basically what we're going to be doing. So first we need to work out what port our external monitor is actually connected to. Or actually there's some laptops that have like dual built-in monitors now so if you're in one of those situations then I guess you're a massive bowler who's got a really expensive laptop but for the rest of us we're gonna be looking at some sensible connections so my internal display and this is the case with most laptops will be something like EDP one or if you've got a second internal display like some laptops do it's probably gonna be EDP two if it's not, then look through your connections and look what one would make sense. Because the other ones we've got here are my DP connector, which is DisplayPort, and HDMI 1. So obviously your internal connectors aren't going to be HDMI and they're not going to be DisplayPort. So through a process of elimination, you can probably work it out. So my external monitor is connected on HDMI 1. So I've already got that connected through my current script. So we're going to go over what I'm actually doing with that script and you'll see how I'm dealing with overscan, but there are some other ways that you can deal with it. So if we bring my scripts up, so it's the extra monitor script. In here, we've got a couple of different scenarios. So my disconnect scenario will go over afterwards, but we'll go over the extra uh, monitor and the duplicate monitor first. So we'll bring up a second terminal just so I can actually show you guys exactly what you would need to do. So the command we're using is xrender obviously and we've worked out what our second monitor is connected to. So mine is connected to HDMI 1. So we want to play around with the output of HDMI 1 so or the connector HDMI 1. So we're going to use the output option which sets the output that you're modifying and in here we would put in HDMI 1 like would be up here. And then the way that I'm dealing with overscan, which isn't the best way because of the way that HDMI works. So if you do dash dash set audio and then go force DVI, what this basically does is for some reason, when you tell the HDMI port that it is actually a DVI port by disabling the audio channel, for some reason that fixes the overscan. I don't know why it does that. I've never actually worked out what the reason for that is, but this seems to be the case on every single person's system who runs this. And then once we've done that, we also need to set the mode. So this is where you set the actual resolution of the output. So I've got a 1920 by 1080 output, so, or 1080 monitor. So that's what I would set it to. I'm not gonna run this because this will probably disable my external screen, which is what I've got OBS on right now. So I'll just leave it as it is, but that's the first step we wanna do. So the second thing we want to do is configure where in relation to our main monitor, our second monitor is actually placed. So to do this, it's fairly simple. So we run xrander again, and we're going to do dash dash output. So the first one we're going to modify is our internal display. So for me, that is EDP one. But if you're using two external displays like you're on a desktop, then obviously whatever your main display is, it's going to be this one. What we're going to do here is we're going to set this to dash dash auto. So that'll basically take whatever the monitor's inbuilt settings are. And then that's fine as it is. So then we also want to modify the second display. So this is our external display. So HDMI dash one in my case. And then there's a couple of different options we can do here. So if we want to, for example, duplicate our main display, then we can use dash dash same as, and then do the name of the internal display, EDP, if I can spell, dash one. So what this will effectively do is it will 
duplicate our main screen onto our second screen. So this is useful in cases where, say you're doing a presentation and you've got your main screen connected to a projector and you want to basically just output whatever you are displaying on your main screen on that. So maybe some PowerPoint slides or, I don't know, maybe you've got a home theater setup as well and you want to set your main screen to mirror onto that screen. There's a bunch of different situations for duplication to actually be used. So the other option is to actually set a location. So if we bring up a third screen, I'll bring up the man page for xrander. So man xrander, we'll zoom in on this. And then we go, if I bring up same as, it should take me just roughly where it is. Okay, here we go. So the places that we can have it are left of, so it would effectively just be placed on the Imagine if you have the screen actually connected as a full screen. So your new screen, when you move your cursor off to the left side of your screen, you would then go onto the second screen on the left side. I've got mine set up as the right side. So when I move my cursor off to the right, as you can see, it goes off the screen. You can also do things like above and below. So however you like having your monitor configured, mine's technically above but i have a habit of just going to the right so i've just configured it like that whatever you want to have it set as you can and this is also true if you were to start chaining extra monitors so you could have your you could have your second monitor to the left of your main one and then you could have your third monitor to the left of that one so it doesn't have to all be in relation to the main display but i said it in relation to the main display because i'm imagining a dual monitor setup but in a triple or even higher monitor setup, you can set the monitor location in relation to the other extra monitors. So if you were gonna have extra monitors, you would just keep running the output command, the name of the connector, and then the next thing you're gonna connect it to. So this is basically all you need to do to fix overscan, but you'll lose audio and also duplicate the display. So if we were to say, change this from same as to right of like I'm running, then that would then set my second monitor to be to the right of my main monitor. So I'm not worried about having audio coming through my HDMI cable because I use a external set of speakers or I use my laptop speakers. But if you are someone in that situation that you do need those TV speakers or your monitor speakers, then there are other solutions. But one of them is dependent on what your monitor is. The other one is a massive pain to get working. So the first one, which if your display supports this, you should use because it will save you so much time. So there is a property called underscan that is on some monitors and some TVs that will let you actually configure where the monitor is actually, or where the, I guess, picture is actually displayed in relation to the monitor itself. So if we run xrander-properties, we can check if mine actually has that. So xrander-properties. And we'll see that on here, it doesn't have the underscan property. So I can't actually use this. But if you are experiencing overscan, then you can change those properties if your display actually supports those. And if you do that, then you also continue to have audio support. So if you do that, then you won't have to run the uh, dash dash, what was it? You won't have to run the dash dash set audio force DVI. You'll still need this mode part, but you won't have to disable the audio channel. So the other option, which I'm honestly too lazy to set up because it is a massive pain to get working, is you can also modify the display matrix of the monitor. So to do this, basically we run an x random dash dash output, then the name of the output, then dash dash transform, and then you get to start doing some matrix manipulation. And if you've never done matrix manipulation, just let me tell you, it's a massive pain and you're probably better off just getting some external speakers because you can get it fixed like this. But it's also going to take you a lot of messing around with the monitor to actually get it to look right because there's no perfect way to work this out. It's pretty much work it out by eye and maybe you can get it looking right, but it's going to be a lot of work to actually do. So I'm not experiencing this problem myself, but apparently sometimes the Intel drivers will not correctly output RGB colors to an HDMI monitor and will only display in a range of 16 to 235 for some reason. 
I haven't run into this problem, but if you are, I will leave this page in the description down below so you can come and check it out. I'll also leave the Xrander ArchWiki page if you want to actually see more about Xrander. So there's some other things you can do with Xrander. So I think it is rotate. So I know that there are some people who will do things like have, where is it? Have monitors that are rotated so they are in portrait. Say you want to have, I don't know what you want to do with that, maybe Maybe you really love your Twitter feed, for example, or maybe you really love Reddit and you want a massive screen just dedicated to Reddit and in portrait. So it's, I guess you have more screen real estate for the scrolling. So you can also do things like dash dash rotate and normal is obviously normal. Left is left rotation, right is right rotation. And then inverted is you flip it upside down. That can also be used just to troll people, so that's also an option. So, I did also say I'll tell you how to disable the monitor, so this is actually very simple. So, we want to run xrander dash dash output, name the output, so in this case it would be hdmi dash one, and we want to set it to off. And also just for good measure to make sure nothing else breaks, we run dash dash output with the internal connector and do dash dash auto. And that'll just make sure that the internal monitor is set back to the default auto settings and the external monitor is then disabled. So I'm never actually running this extra monitor script because it's a bit of a pain. I don't want to have to remember hotkeys or I don't want to write out this command. So as always, I will like to use my favorite program and that is dmenu. So I've got a script called multi-monitor. Basically, it's it's a very simple script. So I will echo out all of my different connection types. So I've got disconnect, extra, and duplicate. I'll pipe that to a D menu, dash I, and that is D menu without being case sensitive. Dash P is the prompt, so that's the prompt text. So if we run that right now, I've got that to super X for extra. And then see, we've got the prompt here. It says monitor configuration. And then that is then piped into an xargs and that is put into my extra monitor script and it'll just set whichever mode I want. So if I was to run disconnect right now, that would disable my second monitor where I've got my OBS and stuff on and then it would drop it back down onto my main display or I could run extra and duplicate. So I think that is pretty much everything for xrander at least today. So if you're using a desktop environment, it probably already has some magic in the background that will deal with dual monitors. But if you're using a window manager like I am, you're using i3, you're using Awesome, DWM, most of the time they're not going to deal with your dual monitor setup. So you're probably gonna have to configure this by yourself. So if you only want duplicated monitors, there's actually another option which involves running no script, at least with i3. So if you have your second monitor plugged in while you start your system, it will automatically detect it and then duplicate the display. So if you only ever want to duplicate the display, I guess that's also an option, just leave it always plugged in. But if you want to be able to hot plug it, then you're going to have to run xrander to actually deal with it yourself. So I've got no idea what's going on in my background, but it's really dark again for some reason. I still need to work out what the problem with that is. I'm probably just going to stick a light there and it'll deal with itself. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see random other configuration videos like this, let me know. Or if you want to just see something completely different, also let me know about that. And if you've got any ideas, I'll happily take them. So if you want to see those videos when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. And if you actually want to get updates though, go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon because you'll probably get updates there. So up in that corner, I will have the playlist that this video is in. So if you want to check out other videos like this, go check that out. And I think that is pretty much everything for this video. So I'm out. <laughs>